Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and today we are going to see the unit 4 that is assessment and management of intranatal period and this unit consists of 17 marks. But the thing is not just this unit, unit 3 and unit 4 both combined together you will get 17 marks that is 1 from 10 marks, 1 from 5 marks and 1 from 2 marks. If you study 2 chapters that is 3 and 4 you are perfect with 17 marks. Now the first topic is labor. What is labor? Labor is nothing but delivery that is the birth of baby. And the definition is it is the process by which the fetus is expelled. Expelled in the sense it uh, comes out. Expelled from the uterine cavity from the uterus after the gestation period. Gestation period in the sense that is 9 months. The 9 months the baby stays in the womb that is known as gestation period. So labor is nothing but the process in which the baby comes out from the uterus after completing the gestation period that is labor next mechanism of labor mechanism of labor is nothing but the steps like it is the series of movement series of movement in the sense the movement continuously takes place and that occur on the head and the fetal the trunk in the process of adaptation during the journey through the pelvic in the sense series of movement like movement takes place and then the birth of the baby starts with head first the baby's head comes out from the vagina and then baby's trunk trunk in the sense body comes out and then leg is delivered in this process the baby is delivered and this journey we consider to be the mechanism of labor now let's see what are the principal movements Principal movements are nothing but the steps that are undergone by the fetus in the time of labor. Okay. So, first step is engagement. Engagement of the head. Generally, baby stays in the womb. But at the time of delivery, the baby comes out like comes down and the baby's head is engaged in the process. And this step is known as engagement of head. And this is the first step in the labor. Next, here we can see the descent and uh, descent is specifically mentioned here. This is actually the process which is seen in the whole labor. From here, in every step, you can see the descent. Descent is nothing but the movement, uh, contraction of uterus and relaxation of uterus muscle makes the baby to move and comes out. No, that motion is known as descent. In every step, we can see this descent. Baby moves and goes down. No, that process is known as descent and it is specifically mentioned here because from here the descent begin next flexion of head flexion of head is nothing but you can see here the baby's head is normal and here the baby's head is moved forward a bit it is because on going downwards the passage the way is getting smaller so on going smaller smaller the baby's head is bent forward and that is known as flexion of head next Internal rotation. Internal rotation is nothing but internally baby rotates. Inside the womb before coming out, baby rotates for the safe delivery. That is for 45 degree it keeps on ro rotating. Here you can see the baby is in this position. Now the baby is in this position. Like baby rotates this way. This way. 45 degree. And that is internal rotation. After internal rotation, the next step is actually croning and it is not present here. Croning in the sense, it is nothing but the fetus head is visible from outside. If you think this is vagina, the fetus head will be visible from outside and that step is known as croning. After croning, you can see the extension. Extension in the sense, so this is mother's body. From mother's body, you can see the fetus head has been came out. And this is known as extension or the birth of head. In this stage, this incipit, face and chin, this three will be swept out from the mother's womb. And that is extension, extension or the birth of head. Between extension and external rotation, there is one step that is known as restitution. This restitution is almost similar to the external rotation. That is, the restitution is nothing but the rotation of head in 45 degree. As you see in this step, the head is in this position. And in this step, the head's position has been changed. In middle, there is a rotation of head. That is known as a restitution. And this external rotation is nothing but with the head rotation, the body also start to rotate. That is, you can see the hand position here and the hand and leg position here. There is a change in that. 
so the restitution is nothing but only the head rotates 45 degree whereas external rotation is nothing but external rotation of head and internal rotation of shoulder that is external rotation mentioned here in the sense head is also rotating with the respect to with that the body is also rotating that is external rotation next after that there is expulsion expulsion in the sense the birth already the face has been came out next the shoulder and trunk and then leg the baby comes out the expulsion takes place and this expulsion takes place in lateral flexion remember the position how the baby comes out in the lateral flexion and descent is a process that follows throughout the labor and this is the principal movements of labor management of labor this management of labor consists of four stages the first stage which is also known as cervical stage or premonital stage and this begins from the onset of labor to the full dilation of cervix that is from the onset of labor is nothing but when the pain begins when the delivery pain begins from then to the full dilation when the cervix opens fully till then it is considered to be the first stage for premigravidal that is first delivery women this stage occurs around 10 to 12 hours when the pain begins like 1 o'clock then the full dilation of cervix occurs at 10 o'clock around 10 to 12 hours this first stage will be occurring for the multigravidal women that is for uh, second delivery or third delivery this will be occurring around 5 to 6 hours signs and symptoms of onset of labor what are the signs and symptoms that is seen in the first stage the first one that is very important that is lightening lightening is also known as welcome sign and this sign is not seen when there is an abnormality in pelvic that is cephalopelvic disproportion that is uh, the pelvic is not in a proper condition for example if somebody is handicap then their pelvic will definitely be will not be in a proper condition for them this lightening condition will not occur what is lightening lightening is nothing but you will feel very light that is at the period of 9 months you will be carrying the baby you will feel very heavy but at the end of the delivery the baby will be coming out uh, the baby will be moving downwards so you you will feel much lighter in the stomach place that is lightening and next is frequency of maturation frequency of maturation is nothing but urination you will be frequently going for urination and next constipation constipation issues will be generally for many women lack of water is the reason for constipation and pelvic pressure when the baby is moving downwards you will feel the high pressure in the pelvic since the baby is moving downwards you will have leg pain leg cramps and edema is also possible and it is also main like cervical changes what are cervical changes in cervical you can see the dilation dilation is nothing but the opening first it will begin with one finger insertion one finger insertion in the sense the cervix will be opened 1.5 cm in further going on it will be two finger insertion that is 3 cm that is nothing but on progressing of labor the cervix will be slowly starts to open up next false pain is also seen in this condition and mood swings is also seen we need to provide them confident we need to they will feel very anxiety that is the main mood swing and we need to provide them emotional support they will have labor pain and this labor pain will be around 10 minutes of interval like in each 10 minutes they will have the pain and this pain will last for 30 seconds and uh, the delivery progressing progressing the 10 minutes gap will be reduced to 2 to 3 minutes and next there are few blood stains also seen in this process and then effacement of cervix now we are going to see the difference between false labor and true labor false labor is nothing but we will feel the pain but delivery doesn't occurs where are true labor is nothing but you will feel the pain and the delivery also occurs first contraction contraction is nothing but the muscles expand and then contract that the hardness and that is present in both places you will feel the pain in both yeah it's very painful pain is also seen in both side yes 
regular contraction is also seen regular contraction in the sense for 10 minutes for 10 minutes you will feel the pain that is seen in both but the difference is the retraction and dilation of cervix is absent retraction is nothing but suddenly the abdomen muscle that uh, the pelvic muscles get hardened suddenly that gets tightened that is absent here and it is present in true labor whereas the dilation of cervix is nothing but the opening of cervix the cervix slowly uh, gets opened it's because the baby is coming out so the cervix gets opened that is absent in false labor whereas it is present in true labor preparation of labor room labor room should be very clean that's very important next avoid the unwanted visitors and unnecessary peoples good artificial light is very important because natural light will definitely will not penetrate into this room so artificial light should be good and necessary drugs and machines should be arranged by the nurse and mainly the delivery kit and emergency equipments and drugs should always be present in the labor room this is the preparation of labor room preparation of woman when the woman come to the hospital the very first thing you need to do is admit her and then check the vital signs after that you need to ask her relatives to provide the previous antenatal records after that you have to provide the gown that is provided in the hospital for delivery process that is the dark green color gown you need to provide to that woman after that you need to do the vaginal examination and then shave the perineal area perineal area is nothing but the external sex organ that is vulva and you have to place the sterile pad over it uh, sterile pad is placed over the vulva because there will be a discharge so we need to place it and emotional support is very important because at the time of labor definitely every woman will be having anxiety even though it might be our second or third delivery still she will feel some kind of anxiety so we need to provide emotional support after that we need to check whether the bowel movement is present or not if there is a absence of bowel movement if she is suffering from constipation we need to provide her enema and this is the preparation of woman partograph which is also known as partogram and the definition of this is nothing but the graphical representation of data that is observed during the labor and this graphical representation is generally found in only single sheet it is useful for monitoring the labor and finding the difficulties earlier and mainly it is also useful in referral interventions and observative process now what are the principles of partogram partogram principle if i read now maybe you can't understand but further on the explanation you'll definitely understand just listen now during active labor active labor in the sense when the labor is going on and that time the rate of cervical dilation cervical opening cervical dilation should not be less than 1 cm per hour per hour it should not be reduced less than 1 cm that is the main principle of partogram if it reduces less than 1 cm then absolutely the delivery is going to be an abnormal delivery it should undergo c section this is how the partograph looks and these are the elements that are seen here first is fetal heart rate at the time of delivery the fetal is inside the mother's womb at that time they will place the sensor to find the fetal heart rate and this fetal heart rate is actually detected per hour from this point to this point it this gap is per hour each hour the fetal heart rate is checked and marked and this graph is formed this is about fetal heart rate second is amniotic fluid here amniotic fluid is also checked per hour and here c indicates clear the amniotic fluid which is releasing from the vagina is clear there is no problem related to amniotic fluid the principle we saw regarding the partograph is here that is the cervical opening should be 1 cm per hour that is for 1 hour it should open 1 cm here is an example like 9 o'clock 10 o'clock 11 o'clock we have the graph here it was 5 and then after 1 hour it is 6 and then after 1 hour it is 7 so the graph goes this way it is normal if it is not opening 1 cm for 1 hour then it is an abnormal delivery for example for 9 o'clock it is on 5 for 11 o'clock it is on 10 like in 2 hours gap it is opening 1 inch then it's an abnormal delivery we need to do c section 
here there is two lines one is alert line and other is action line and the gap between these two lines are four hours okay none of the delivery will actually prolong to four hours from here we will start marking our delivery progress like how the how it is opening this line indicates the warning sign if the line is moving downwards like for two hours the cervix is opening one inch for three hour if the cervix is opening one inch the line never goes upwards it keeps on going this downwards it will go almost near to action line when the line is going towards this action line then we need we need to take the action that is the warning sign that's why this line is played here it is all about this cervix that is nothing but in normal delivery it will open 1 cm per hour that is for 1 hour it will open 1 cm and next there is a contraction and this contraction is checked per 10 minutes generally per 10 minutes 20 minutes they will be checking the contraction if the contraction is not enough we will provide oxytocin recommended by doctor okay and there are other drugs also provided during the labor and that will be noted here and next pulse and bb you and next pulse and bp will be marked here you can see here this this marking is bp and this marking is pulse and the temperature per 2 hours the temperature will be checked and next urine urine volume will be observed regularly what are the benefits of partograph by using this partograph the c section that has been reduced and the child mortality and morbidity rate has been decreased and it is useful for the study purpose and normal delivery rate has been increased these are the benefits of partograph second stage of labor let's see the management of second stage of labor and the second stage is from full dilation of the cervix to the fetal birth that is when the cervix starts to open up when the baby is trying to come out from there to till the child birth this is second stage in this stage the child is born okay in this stage if you see the premi gravida that is the woman is going to give the first delivery when the woman is going on the first delivery labor the time is 1 hour whereas for multi gravida it is 30 minutes huh? sorry not hours 30 minutes duration is for premi gravida it is 1 hour for multi gravida it is 30 minutes sign and symptoms in this this three are very important the first one is uterine action uterine action is nothing but here you can see descent descent is the regular contraction and expansion and the movement of baby is descent the baby is trying to come out because of that there is even the rupture of membrane is found here maternal vital signs are seen like in the form of temperature respiratory rate and blood pressure temperature will be increased respiratory rate will be decreased and bp will be increased and vaginal signs that is nothing but opening and pain that is nothing but when the baby is trying to come out the vagina will be widened widening and there will be pain if the baby is not able to come out we will even perform the episiotomy which is also a opening and a painful process these are the sign and symptoms conduct of delivery conduct of delivery is nothing but why we are conducting this deliveries with following so many protocols like we need to maintain the sanitizing measures we need to provide emotional support we are recording the that uh, partogram why we are performing so much things it's because the principle is it's because we have to perform the natural delivery that is we are reducing we are trying to reduce the c-sections and we are trying to perform increase the rate of slow and steady natural deliveries and even we are trying to decrease the perineal injuries and infections this is the main cause to perform the delivery in so many standard ways and the main thing is the preparation that is at the time of delivery the woman is given the lithotomy position and the bladder is full we will provide catheterization and everything should be followed in a sanitized way Please do Google what is lithotomy position. If you know it, uh, it's very good. Lithotomy position is the position in which the women's labor is conducted. It is important. Okay. Neonatal resuscitation. Neonatal resuscitation is nothing but the cleaning the hairway. 
you have been observed that after the birth of the baby the doctor usually holds the baby in the upside down position because when the baby is present in the womb it doesn't breathe its lungs will not be functionable after the birth we need to make sure the baby's lungs is functioning so neonatal resuscitation is done okay that is nothing but clearing the airway and the health condition of baby after the birth is generally checked by apgar score and in this apgar score if the score is between 7 to 10 then the baby is absolutely normal or maybe some kind of minimal small depression depression in the sense small defect it is seen if the score is between 4 to 6 it's in the moderate condition we need to take action immediately if the score is between 0 to 3 then the baby is severely ill we need to take care and there is a chance of being the illness to be continued lifelong this is apgar a for appearance p for pulse g for grim a for activity r for respiration based on the result you are going to give the mark like for the appearance if you see the baby is blue in the whole body then you need to give the zero mark if the baby's body is pink and the extremities that is leg and hands are in blue color then you need to give one mark if the baby is whole pink color healthy then you need to give the two marks on the whole calculation if you get 7 to 10 then the baby is healthy okay next pulse if you can't detect the pulse then you have to consider it as absent that is zero marks and then if it is below 100 then it is one if it is above 100 then you have to mark it as two next grim it is nothing but reflex reflex in the sense reacting if the baby is not reacting it's very quiet then it is floppy that is zero if the baby is reacting but not active it is reacting very slowly then it is one if the baby is very active then you can give us two marks for it next here muzzle tone muzzle tone in the sense how the baby is shaking its hand whether it is feeling uh, strong to move its hand or not or mm, strong to move its leg or not like that first it is absent absent in the sense you have to take it as zero next it is one that you can flex it hand and leg it is able to move but it is not active just a moderate way next last one is active active in the sense it is moving its hand vigorously that is it's very active generally the baby be acting that way next respiration respiration if it is absent then you will be placing the baby in the ventilators next if the baby has slow and irregular still the baby will be in the ventilators next generally if the baby is crying vigorously then you have to give it two marks and even in this condition the baby is in ventilator because uh, soon after the birth the baby will be placed under the oxygen mask so generally the baby will be placed in the ventilators so on calculating all these marks if you get 7 to 10 then the baby is in normal condition there are few steps we need to be followed by the nurse during the resuscitation that is we need to receive the baby in a pre warmed towel at the time of delivery that is we will come to know no we need to warm the towel before itself next place the baby in the backwards that is the position of the baby we need to lay it down in the back and the neck should be slightly extended okay and then suction is performed suction should be done in both mouth and nose to avoid aspiration to avoid further problems and this suction should be done around the pressure of 80 mm hg and this is very important the free flow oxygen is provided to the baby that is the baby is kept like this and around we will see a basket like thing a bowl like thing will be placed around this baby's head and the oxygen wire is connected to it in that way the oxygen goes to the baby and the baby inhales oxygen rich air epigeoctomy epigeoctomy is nothing but the incision in the perineal area perineal area that is imagine this is as anus and this is vagina if the baby is not able to come out then we will cut here and this cut is known as epigeoctomy the cut between the vagina and the anus that is known as epigeoctomy why we perform this epigeoctomy to prevent the damage in pelvic floor 
pelvic muscles if premature baby is about to delivery the baby itself cannot come out so we will promote the delivery process by cutting here and if the baby has any conditions like shoulder dystocia if the baby's shoulder is injured or the, if there any defect in the shoulder then we will promote the delivery process by this method and mal position baby is in the wrong position fetal distress fetal distress in the sense fetal is not receiving enough amount of oxygen inside the womb so we need to take the baby as soon as possible and if the child has large head then the ba baby can't come out then we will perform this episiotomy by performing episiotomy what are the benefits okay first for mother if you see in the mother case the episiotomy cut is easy to repair it will heal very fastly and the structure will be protected that in the sense in normal delivery normally there is a chance of lowering the uterine structure the uterine section never comes down in this condition if we perform episiotomy the uterine section never comes down and second stage second stage of labor will be shortened will be completed in very small period of time and the tears unwanted tears will be avoided this is in the point view of mother when we see in the point of child the birth will be very easy and if any damages can be prevented mainly brain damage these are the benefits of episiotomy and this episiotomy can be performed in two ways that is median and mediolateral in the name itself you can understand let me explain it in proper way this is anus and this is vagina okay this is the midline in if we cut in this straight midline this method is known as median it is straight okay if we cut in the straight line it is median and the second is mediolateral in mediolateral method we will take the inc incision in 45 degree from the, this midline from the midline we will take 45 degree cut and this cut is known as mediolateral this method is called as median this method is called as mediolateral now third stage of labor in third stage of labor we will see about the placenta that is separation descent and expulsion of placenta in second stage itself the baby has been born and in third stage we will study about placenta after the placenta removal that is placenta deliver there is loss of blood and clots and around 100 to 300 ml of blood is lost that is in the delivery process there is more amount of blood has been lost after delivery that is after delivery the placenta is removed after removal of placenta there is another 100 to 300 ml of blood will be lost and this removal of placenta should be done within 5 to 15 minutes of the baby's birth it is according to the theoretical value but in general life it is performed within 5 minutes if the child is born at 9 o'clock within 9 5 the placenta will be removed the signs and symptoms in this stage is mother will have shivering there will be vaginal discharge blood loss there is more blood loss pain and the uterus will never be in the shape because the child has been just born so uterus will lose its shape and generally it is a uh, found in globular shape examination of placenta examination of placenta is thoroughly done for 1 minute and we will observe the size shape color scars very detailedly and the very main thing that you need to make sure is you have to observe whether the full placenta is came out or not that is placenta is generally round in shape if placenta has been extracted this much then the remaining part is present inside the mother's womb we need to take it immediately or else mother's life may be in danger and the weight of placenta is almost equal to 1/6th of weight of the baby cord length is around 50 cm that is this cord umbilical cord length is around 50 cm and few mothers may have uh, 52 like more than 50 cm and few mothers may have less than 50 cm this umbilical cord consists of two arteries and one veins it is mentioned here because if there is any damage in the arteries or veins that indicates the fetus also has some kind of damage in fractions if the if it is in bright red color that means it is produced now it is uh, generated newly if it is in the gray color then it is old one this indicates if it is bright red color the baby has been received enough amount of oxygen and blood if it is in the gray color it indicates the baby has not acquired enough amount of oxygen this indicates the child may have some kind of problem in future next 
lobes of placenta should be circular in shape like inside the placenta there will be lobes like compartments and that should be in correct circular shape if there is any damage in this it also indicates there is some problem related to child now separation of placenta in separation of placenta you can see there are two methods one is Charles method and other is Matthew Duncan method the first method you can see the central part of placenta comes first and the side part of the placenta comes later whereas in Matthew if you see the side comes first and the central part of placenta comes later in Charles method if you see the fetal side that is if this is uterus and this is placenta this side this side is called fetal side and this side is called this side is called maternal side if you see in fetal side it is very shiny in Charles method and this Charles method is also known as aka in the sense also known as shiny Charles method and here you can see the placenta is in inverted umbrella shape that is inverted umbrella in the sense generally umbrella is in in this shape but if you see it is in inverted umbrella shape the placenta will be in this shape and coming to Matthew if you see in Matthew the maternal side will be red and rough the surface will not be smooth it will be red and rough and it is also known as dirty Duncan these are the two methods of separation of placenta now fourth stage of labor and this stage is normally not asked in the exam so no need to worry for general knowledge purpose you need to know this fourth stage is from the birth of the placenta till one hour like if the placenta is removed on 9 5 then another like until 10 5 the fourth stage is continued here we will be closely observing the mother like we will check the vital signs frequently BP pulse temperature and mainly the bleeding and emotionally stable or not we will be checking her if she is feeling any anxiety or she is mentally affected or not we will be checking her continuously and we will even examine her to find if any critical condition is found in mother or not for example there is any kind of hemorrhage in the uterus or not like that we will be checking her taking care of the mother after the delivery is known as fourth stage okay maintaining records and reports it's very important and it begins from the beginning of the labor till the end not just beginning of the labor from the beginning of the pregnancy the report will be maintained and even after the birth the motherhood is also maintained in the form of record okay everything will be recorded and we need to maintain it starting from prenatal all kind of checkups should be maintained and during labor what kind of drug fluids and any methods like episiotomy if anything is performed that will be recorded and we need to maintain those records and after delivery if any kind of medications are given those also will be recorded and we need to maintain it this is all for the study purpose in further it will be useful so we need to maintain it and mainly we need to check mental health physical health physiological health sociological health how the patient is uh, uh, reacting with all how the patient is talking to all she is normal or not everything should be checked and everything will be recorded and we need to maintain it this is known as maintaining of record and what are the uses of this let's come to know that the use of maintaining these records are mainly for the study purpose it will be useful for many students for study purpose like if the students are from nursing they will go and ask the patient what are the records they have we will use it for study purpose right like that and from treatment purpose for example if the patient is maintaining the record by seeing those records the doctor will come to know for what medication the patient is allergy or for what medication she is so frequently used to so he can provide those medications so that she will get healed fastly and for nursing nursing students for making care plan it is very useful and for doctor as I said to avoid few kinds of medicines it is very useful vaginal examination vaginal examination you can see of two types that is first one is during the labor and second one is after the labor after the labor in the sense after giving birth the mother comes for regular checkup on that time they will be checking the vaginal examination will go on and that is second type first we will discuss about second type and later i'll save the first one that is during labor how vaginal examination is done in this one 
first the doctor follows the standard measures like you know sanitizing the hands wearing the gloves and applying lubricants on the hands everything will be performed we will advise the patient to lay down in the lithotomy position this is lithotomy position and in this position after laying down doctor will insert their left hand either one or two finger inside the vagina and alternatively the right hand will be pressing on the belly that is will be pressing the uterus at the belly they will be pressing the uterus by pressing and by inserting the doctor will find if any kind of abnormalities will be examined if any unusual growths or if any kind of lumps if anything is present the doctor will come to know this examination is done after the delivery in the routine checkup vaginal examination and this process is followed during the labor process okay and now in this process doctor will follow all the standard methods of hygiene like washing his hands four hands and wearing sterile gloves everything will be followed after that vulva toileting will be done in the sense antiseptic solutions will be applied over the vulva to clean the area after cleaning antiseptic lotions will be applied over the area after applying now the procedure begins doctor by using his left hand he will separate the libia minora okay by using the left hand the doctor will separate the libia minora and then by using his right hand he will insert either the middle finger or the index finger inside the vagina and those fingers like right hand fingers will be covered with antiseptic cream how the procedure is done by using the left hand the doctor separates the libia minora by using the right hand either middle finger of the index finger or even two fingers will be insert inside the vagina and this procedure is done during the labor to see how much dilation of cervix is done to see whether the delivery is going in the proper way or not this is vaginal examination these are the questions from unit 3 and unit 4 you will get it for 17 marks so do practice well that's it for today guys meet you in the next video until then stay tuned bye